Accounting for startups. If you're a startup, there's a good chance that you're bootstrapping things in terms of your finances. You're maybe developing software and you're trying to get to a place where you can impress somebody enough to want to give you, let's say, some VC funding. And uh, the, you know, this, this is something I've been planning on doing for a little while. And then it, it was sort of catalyzed by something I watched on Gary Vaynerchuk's Ask Gary V, his episode 197 on 43 North, uh, Pitching, Investing, and Scaling. Um, and he talked about, uh, he answered somebody's question about, what do I do if I have VC capital and, and, you know, to make sure that I get, sort of get the most out of it? It was something along those lines. And his answer was, have a strategy, of course. And so the purpose of this series now, uh, at least at the outset, is going to be to help you think in terms of what that strategy might look like, especially from the number side of things. So the first thing we want to do, and especially given that you're, that you're bootstrapping it, I'm assuming, um, we might want to use something that's free or something that we're already sort of paying for. Like if we use Google Apps for work to use our email, which a lot of us are doing these days, then of course with that you get all everything that comes with it, including Google Docs, including Google Sheets. So Google Sheets is a great way to, uh, you know, keep track of anything financial. And it's also collaborative, right? And it's shareable real time in the cloud with the other members of your team, whoever needs to be able to see this. And of course, it has all the sharing capabilities that come with Google so that you can be specific as to who has access to what. So Google Sheets is a great way to start out. Of course, I recommend you get into some real accounting software as soon as you can. So if you can afford it, use something like QuickBooks Online. And I'm going to get into that uh, in a few videos from now in terms of what it might look like when you're using something like QuickBooks Online for a startup. So the first thing I want to have you do, and we're going to try and keep these videos fairly short and digestible, is I want you to make start making a list of what you think your expenses are going to be every month. Are you paying rent, right? If you're paying software developers, uh, you know, so salaries, right? Software development. You might not even have uh, any kind of anything by way of like an administrative assistant. It might just be you and a few developers just working to develop an application, right? Working to get that next amazing idea out to market. Um, so we want to start thinking, you know, we'll probably need, to, we're going to need some equipment, computer equipment, but a lot of people might bring their own computers to the table in a venture like this, but maybe some computer equipment, especially if you end up renting your own office space. If you use like a WeWork kind of place, um, you know, then, uh, then you're definitely going to be bringing your own. You're not going to be buying computer equipment for the office if you're using something like WeWork. Um, so we want to think in terms of this. So come up with a list. Uh, do it in Google Sheets and get caught up with me. That's the first step in this process. And then we're going to start taking the other thing I want you to do. So here's the item. And here's the amount. And then let's put in another column for the frequency. How often are you going to have to spend this? Rent is going to be monthly, right? You might look at some uh, startup accounting costs, right? You probably want to talk to an accountant, form an entity, right? Maybe you want to form an LLC or an S Corp. And to do that, you should probably talk to accountants and maybe even a lawyer, right? And you might want some bookkeeping in there, right? So let's insert a line. Let's just call this accounting. These all come under the heading of professional fees, of course. And you look at the frequency. So you might have a one-time cost for a consult with an attorney to get an entity set up. And again, it may be too soon for that. Every situation is going to be a little different. But my goal here is to get you thinking about this stuff and laying it all out. What's this going to cost? And if you and, and trust me, we're going to get into this. If you have, if you're thinking already, well, I have a bunch of people that I need to hire. I, we're going to create a schedule. I'm going to show you how to create a simple schedule in this, where you can list all the people that you're going to hire and what you're going to be paying them. And we're going to look at what you might typically pay a software developer. Um, and we'll also look at this scenario where you may be uh, offering equity in exchange for their input. My experience these days is most software developers are sort of sick and tired of people promising them the world in the form of equity, uh, and they probably want to get paid. So if you know your idea may be the best thing since sliced bread, um, you know, money talks, and they can't put that equity in their bank account to pay their bills with. So a lot of developers are going to want to get paid. 
so we're going to need to get some funding and we're going to need to get an idea of how much funding we're going to need to function before we can get that VC funding, right? And maybe we're contributing our own, maybe we're borrowing, maybe we can get some uh, capital raised with the bank. We we'll probably have to personally guarantee anything like that with a startup. Things like this are what you want to think about, and we need to get a sense of what's called the burn rate. So once we know exactly what it's going to cost us to survive month over month for the next year or two while we get this thing off the ground, we need to know what our burn rate is. In other words, if we got, if we if we want a competition that gives us five million dollars in funding, then how long will that five million dollars last based on this burn rate? And bottom line, will it last long enough for us to be able to bring this thing to market and actually start generating revenues from it somehow? If not, have somebody buy it from us. Those are usually the two strategies with these software development startups, right? We're either going to bring it to market and, and start getting paid because we're going to charge for something, or we're going to hope that somebody buys it from us. And that's how we essentially make money. And then whoever buys it from us, it's up to them, of course, to figure out how to monetize it from there. Uh, and, and it may be both. Maybe we want to bring it to market and start making money with it and then eventually attract a buyer. So either way, these are the things I want to get you to start thinking about. And I want you to start listing this out. So by the time I do the next video, I'm going to have this filled in with some sample numbers. And then I'm going to show you how to kind of take this one step further and start specking it out on a timeline to see what it's actually going to cost us to live for the next year or two. And based on that, how much funding do we need? And if we know how much funding we have, how long will it last? That, my friends, is the beginning of accounting for startups when you're bootstrapping your accounting and bookkeeping and looking at things from the perspective of uh, from a very practical perspective of what is it going to take for us to survive as always if you have any questions concerns comments feedback push your comments below wherever you happen to be watching this if you're on YouTube check the description for a link there's likely a link there that'll take you over to the blog where there's a write-up that gives you even more detailed information on what I'm talking about here in this video you can always reach me at Seth at nerdenterprises.com visit me on the web www www.nerdenterprises.com, sethdavid.com, or schoolofanswers.com. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.